YouTube, welcome, a special unboxing today, a couple of leftover gifts from Christmas and New Year's, a special pair of sneakers, as well as a richer meal and a very special Rolex Daytona station. You're a very animated character, you know that? Thank you. It's perfect that we have Bart Simpson here. Should I say well, that again for the camera? Welcome YouTube. That you're live? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with a couple of gifts that were left over from the season. You guys know we're friends with Trax NYC. Well, there's also a Trax Tokyo. And Mike from Trax Tokyo sent us some of his merch, which I think, according to Adrian, is very fitting. Mike, I mean, thanks. huge. Shout out, Mike. Shout this, out, Mike. This is, this is unbelievable. I love this. Both I will wear this. USA this. I like this. From our boy, Sonny in Taiwan. Empire, Empire Motor, Motor Club. Club. Right. And thank you, Sonny. Oh, oh, this is so me. Look at that. Shark. Well, actually, this is, this is you, Adrian. I am a shark. Hats. That's you. Hats. All day, That's all you. All right. What are you trying to say? Uh, next thing, something very special. Shout out to Christie's Auction, specifically their, their sneaker house. And I'm going to let the biggest sneaker head in the house talk what about I, this. What if I just went like this? Oh. <laughs> uh, these are signed uh, Air Max Day. The first year was 2014. And they're signed by the man, the myth, the legend, Tinker Hatfield. That is responsible for Air Max 1 design, Jordan 3 through the 15. Oh, so he's a G rare. tanker. Shout out to Edgar from Dior. He sent me something. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is, but I'm about to find out. Oh. Oh. Or no, it's a shoe cleaning kit. It's a shoe cleaning kit from the sneaker cleaner, leather care, sneaker protector, odor protector. Speaking of sneakers, this is actually pretty Dior. dope. I'm not, I can't say that I've ever had a Dior sneaker cleaner. Let's look at some watches. Let's start with this, Adrian. What you got on this? 15500 ST Blue. Again, they discontinued the 50th anniversary. They came back with a new reference 15510 ST Blue, and which was very strange because we got one of those in, in which I sent back because it's the exact same thing as this. All right. I think it's pretty where, where are they trading right now? Something something in that condition. Oh, sorry, 2019, I forgot to show it to you guys. It's going to be upwards in the high 40s as opposed to 110,000 where it was. For a brand new piece. For a brand new piece. Yes. All right. Was this, a, was this a Florida pickup? No, it's not no. a Florida pickup. Well, I know this is a Florida pickup. Half the Florida pickup. pickups were sold and shipped off, but this is a Florida pickup. This is a, 11. What do you think of this strap on this 1103, the blue strap? I don't know if I'm a fan. I Actually, I'm a huge, I'll tell you why I'm a huge fan. Too. I think this is a Florida pickup, right? That's a Florida pickup, yeah. So these chronos are still, these These were always reasonable, even when like the hype was the hypest. Like the older chronos, black and white dial, were still always reasonable, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, so. I'm actually working on a deal with a, with a buddy of mine to buy this and he was asking about this as well as the 50th anniversary one and to be honest with you this is why I didn't love the 50th anniversary ones because exactly like you this. can't like you just you can't tell the difference like this far away from where Davis is right so why why you know you're better off spending almost half the money on this well speaking opinion. of older chronos how about the rose gold version of this it, well th this is the this is the successor to this reference right. 26331 OR brown on strap great watch to dress up great watch to wear casually I mean, some numbers just. So those were trading upwards of 90,000 today. They could be had in the, in the mid to high 50s range, pending condition. Uh, there's some Roman buys in there just for one of you. Root beer. Again, steady, settle. Steady, steady, Probably seller. Can't get both gold and both two tones, just steady, selling. Yeah. They shifted in price. Uh, these are, are these hovering around retail now? A little over. A little, a little over. So hovering around retail now. And again, it's still. I think the two-tone root beer still is the most requested two-tone watch. And as far for as the sure. gold pieces are concerned, would you say this is a top three? Uh, well, I mean, listen, Daytona is obviously number uh, well, one. Uh, Daytona Skydweller than this. I would say Daytona this and then Skydweller. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe because there's such a variety of Skydwellers out there. No, it's just it's just a lot more money. Speaking of Skydwellers, here was the here's hot take for you. Yeah. Was this the hottest stainless? Was this the hottest sports stainless steel watch from Rolex 2022? The Skydweller blue. No, definitely Daytona. It was still Daytona, of you course. think? Was it? But it was a very, very close second. Uh, yeah, very safe to say. If you remember, if you remember uh, when these things first came out, before the craze started and everything started going over list, I said that Sky Dweller stainless steel would give you the one watch that's going to manage to consistently sell over list, much like the Daytona for its entire life. And I think it still stands true well, because Pepsi, Batman's. But no, but that back then Pepsi's weren't trading for that. You know what I mean? So this was the one watch that actually accomplished with the Daytona did before the hype of everything. Well, don't forget being over they it. also make a lot less blue blue dial sky dwellers than they do pretty much any stainless steel sports watch from Rolex. So Okay, fair enough. Speaking of stainless steel, oh, speaking oh, of that girl. That girl. 
And again, these are steadily trading. They're trading, they're selling, they're selling, they're selling. They're still hovering around 2X, anywhere from, you know, almost 2X to over 2X, depending on condition. And I feel like that they're gonna continue doing that. Yes, they will. And I'm not gonna ask you whether you prefer oyster or what do you call it? Because that's a question that would beat to death, I feel like, yeah. on these unboxings. This or that? Ooh. Oldie but a goodie. Was this not the number one watch that we sold to Russian speaking clients oh. when this watch came out? It was number one, two, and three. So Breguet is a brand that was and still is extremely popular in Russia, Ukraine, former other former uh, Russian Soviet Union republics or whatever that is. Breguet was a very, very popular brand. The one thing that Breguet was missing is a big watch, a big sports watch in a precious metal. The only thing they really had was like a Type 20, Type 21, and that was really not a popular model because it didn't look like a typical Breguet. It didn't have the finishes and all that other stuff. I'm not gonna get into the finishes. That's what we have Marco for. But then this came out. We probably, I remember selling these things like a 10 off at the time where you could pretty mm -hmm. much sell any other brand out there at a 30 off. The number one, in fact, we were in Miami for New Year's. At its height, at its peak, it was trading near $30,000. You know, mm -hmm. right now it's, you know, hovering around that $20,000 price range. But this was a watch I could not get enough of. Like when these were offered to me by dealers, I didn't care what the discount was, I just bought them. And we uh, gave Marine Chrono. Brigade Marine Colonel. Yeah, I love the lot. Adrian, what can you uh, tell me about this? 5396R. And you say underrated? 100% underrated, especially with the with the baguette numbers, with the baguette numerals. I just think, look, it's a watch that's a, considered a grand complication for Patek Philippe that could be had under $65,000. And it's just, it's just aesthetically beautiful to me. Blue dial, blue strap, so, baguette dial, enough said. I actually fell in love with that the first time I saw Kevin Hart wearing that before he was an AP uh, ambassador. How about I tell you, I still absolutely love this watch. What's the new flex for 2023, Adrian? It's the sweats with the dress. That's sweats, that. sweats with the dress. That's how we're doing You heard it from Adrian first. I love this watch. And you, if you do like a price comparison, a gold Rolex around that price range versus this, uh, steel, steel paddocks that are more than this, it's just like, yeah. I, I, eventually people will wake up, two door. I think there's a, there's a vintage version of these mm -hmm. as well. Yep. And this is one of those remakes. The remakes, yep. Look, size, heritage colors, Chrono. just look, I don't know what to say about the Heritage Chrono. I kind of need Chris for that, but bottom line is, is that we get a ton is of orange. Is there orange in it? Of oh, course. it's a Chris wash. Hey, look, he's hey. here. <laughs> oh, look, look, he's here. Chris, what can you tell us about the Heritage Tudor Chrono? Uh, not a lot, it's a great watch in general. There you go. A man of few words, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You heard it here first, Machine Gun Chris. We can't get enough of price point pieces such as this because it's just the nature of the beast. Regardless of what, what you can afford, it's not even about if you can afford a $5,000, $3,000 watch or a $50,000 watch. I'm finding collectors that have $50,000, $70,000 watches in their collection pick up quite a few of these because for daily wearers, for something that, you know, you can just beat the crap basically and it keeps on ticking much like Rolex, I find that as a good option, especially when people want to travel somewhere. They don't want to wear a $50,000 watch, but they still want to wear something. I think that's the ticket, and it's been Omega Tudor in that respect the whole way. Speaking of Omega, again, let me beat another dead horse packaging from Omega home run. Why you gotta beat dead horses? Because I just I keep what haven't heard that. What horse ever do to you, Roman? So, Roman, just show the watch, okay? Here, I, guys, I, I, Omega I, Snoopy, beautiful, beautiful. You know, I, you know what? Would you prefer this on a strap or bracelet? Strap, strap. Because if you, the minute you put that on a bracelet, I feel like it will take away from the watch. A little more Rolexes. And this is a guy who's here. It's Monday. Okay. Another underrated Rolex? <laughs> no, that's what Woody Woodpecker does that. <laughs> no, Snoopy does that too. All right. Anyway, back to what is this? It's a Rolex? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Master Rhodium. Underrated? Um, yeah, I actually think it's underrated because it's one of the only pieces that has a platinum bezel. So it's actually got a little bit of oomph to it. And I just love the Rhodium dial. So yeah. The Rhodium dial is nice. Yeah. Uh, the original one had the platinum dial, if you remember. Holy uh, smokes. Speaking of Yacht Masters, this or the two-tone? Oh, that for sure. See, I like the two-tone. No, no, no. They're, because they came out with the two-tone first, if you remember. They, yes. did, they did the white gold, they did the yellow gold, they did the two-tone, and then they did this. The two-tone was with rose gold. Did they do a two-tone before steel? Before steel, and, this, and then steel came out. Honestly, the only option you have for a big-ass Rolex. Well, minus, well the, you mean? minus the 50 millimeter behemoth. Uh, with the James Cameron, deep seas, sea dweller 43s. But, but, the, but the sea dweller, the sea dwellers 40, uh, the James Cameron's, they're, they're a little awkward because they're really tall. So they don't seem, they don't wear as big, I feel like. This, if you wanted a big watch, you want a Rolex and your complaint is that I, I can't find a Rolex big enough. Besides the 50 millimeter this came out with, this is your option. I just, I just Where are you trading, by the way? I just find this, this watch has so much character to it with that blue bezel. 
You know what I mean? It just it did the watch pops. Um, it, you know, honestly, I think it's the when they did this Yacht Master. How about here's a hot take for you? This is the first Yacht Master that I look at and actually feel like it has something to do with sailing. Like the yellow gold Yacht Master, the white gold Yacht Master, or the original ones, they don't really sing Yacht Master to me or yachting. You're right, they don't sing, they just say Yacht Master on the dial. Six Panerai straps to go with. Oh my God. This, this is like this Adrian, is this is not for your patient. This is mummified. This, this is, is this, this is like this is, this is how not, this is not this for is your literally patient. how they like bury the mummies. Oh, where's the watch? Oh, there it is. It's a it's a lefty. This watch was the pan the Panerai Destro as they call it. Obviously, which stands for lefty. Um, they actually use the word Destro in describing this watch, unlike Rolex. But uh, so the lefty Panerai was probably one of the no, most did. collectible Panerais out there, right? Uh, outside of the PAM 203, the Angulus movement, the lefty Panerais were most thought after by the Panaristis, one of the earlier models. And apparently whoever we bought this from went a little haywire on the straps. I mean like, my, my, my God. So yeah, if you buy this, you get 70,000 straps. But the Destro Panerai was and still is one of the most collectible Panerais out there. Die High Panaristi, they all have the lefties because there just weren't very many made. So they made it, they made a lefty in black and I think they made a lefty in white, which is, I believe this is a 5140. Is. I am correct. This is a Panerai 5140 BA, which stands for white gold. Again. You mean Brigade. It, what did I say? Panerai. No, I said Brigade. You, you said, said Panerai. Did I say Panerai? Yeah, yeah. I could have said Roll the tape. Roll the tape. So the 5140 Brigade is, again, your typical dressy Brigade with all the markings of Brigade designs, finishes, et cetera, et cetera, size. This is a brigade, one of the few brigades that's more than 40 millimeters. So if you're looking to put some real estate on your wrist yet still staying the dressy way, the dressy, still staying the dressy way. That's and by the way, if you're an FP Jorn fan, you're not a real FP Jorn fan unless you own a brigade. Just throwing it out there because Louis Brigade is FP Jorn's hero. And I thought that I would just have to say that. Okay. Did you unwrap the watch? God help me. Adrian, what are your thoughts on this color travel? Bro, you need Jesus in your life. <laughs> Whenever I see a vintage old paddock Calatrava, I am going to pick it up immediately. When you when you got things trading sub $10,000 from a brand that is the Rolls Royce of all watches, from a brand that, you know, production numbers at this time were so few in between, I always find it in my heart that I have to buy it. I know you do. Not very well where you do. I go away for three weeks and this is what you buy. I'm never leaving again. Wait, there's more, Adrian. Oh, there's a couple of more Roman buys here. Well, you'll probably approve of this. Adrian? Yes. Will you approve of this at least? This I will approve of. Okay. This I'll approve of. Look at that. Again, uh, this is probably older than you, Adrian. It is actually older than you. For sure. Um, with that said, what I love about these older Rolex is the semi vintage or as or neo vintage as, as uh, I mean, that's vintage. Adam, th this is actually that's pretty vintage. vintage. But when you're wearing this, can you really tell how old this is and what you pay? Yes, you can. You can, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you when can. you're wearing this from, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> but look, guys, uh, yes, this is going to go to Peter. It's going to require some work. This is going to require a little bit of service, I'm sure. But bottom line you is. You know what's funny? Forget about, forget about uh, looking at the watch and telling it's vintage. You don't even have to look at it, you can just hear it. <laughs> And the you way you, the you way, can literally this, hear it's it. It's the flimsiness of the bracelet. You know what's funny though? I like the flimsy bracelet on the older well, A lot of people Especially do that. This is the, the river bracelet. Exists. This is as flimsy as it gets. But, uh, and it's just, it's just that, that rattling feel on do your wrist. Do it again. That rattling but feel shake, on your wrist. Shake it a little bit. <laughs> there you go. The watch that took six hours to unwrap. Yeah, the unwrap. watch that took six hours to unwrap. Now guys, I look, say what you want about the band, brand Frank Mueller and the fact that he is the master of complications and he was, um, his brand was, the most popular thing actually before I started the best watches he makes in my opinion are the double mysteries for women to me That's the actually, craftsmanship actually, it's probably a men's watch no know I'm it. sorry you this is not a men's watch unless you're Takashi 69 like that is not a men's watch now this is not just a double mystery so this is not a regular double mystery so the regular double mysteries he made with regular stones or diamonds this is a baguette and this is a right. rainbow and guess what this is not him jumping on a bandwagon of rainbow right this is i'll call this a budget rainbow right but this is not him jumping on the bandwagon a rainbow because he's been there done that 
if you remember his first co his collection going back probably about 15 years it was called color dreams where he did the different mm -hmm. color numbers then he did the different color stones and stuff like that so if anything it would be daytona biting off of him because he did this whole multicolor rainbow situation a lot earlier than um daytona and everybody else jumping on the bandwagon was it hublo did it uh rolex did it uh automar did it patek did it patek did it they all they all did it but this was uh before now frank Mueller. When I was coming up, before I was in a watch industry, before I had any money, King Conquistador Chrono in stainless steel on a bracelet was the watch to have. If you had one of those, game over. That was like rocking a Richard Mille back then. And guess what? Richard Mille himself said that he was inspired by Frank Mueller. He was the master of complications. I wouldn't necessarily say that the double miss, well, you said for women. If, we, if you want to talk about favorite watches, nostalgically, I'm going to say the King Conquistador Chrono, the Tenno shape one, not the Cortez the Square. If you look at some of his complicated, his highest complicated pieces out there. He is and was the master of all complications, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to show one more Breguet. No, this is the, this is the box for the other Breguet. Never mind, that's empty. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go to an independent that is not talked about much. And it's not really that, an independent because he has a son. Mm -hmm. Arnold and Son. If you guys remember when we were at watch time, uh, we showed some of the new pieces from Arnold and Son. Unfortunately, I didn't get some of the newer stuff. I, I got some, some of the previous models, but again, we tend to practice what we preach and Arnold and Son just makes tremendous watches. For those of you that are familiar with them, uh, again, they've been around for a very long time. It's a brand that was revived. The name was revived because they've been around since 17 something. Uh, and guess what? It's an independent that doesn't get a whole lot of love. Quality of watchmaking is superb. Design is superb. Some of the pieces that they, I mean, look at this thing. They make absolutely gorgeous watches. They make extremely complicated watches. In fact, Marcus should be coming back here in a couple of days. I will have him do a separate video on Arnold & Son in terms of history, in terms of watchmaking, and in terms of a whole lot of other cool factors. When you look at this lady's piece, look how pretty this is. So Arnold & Son is again, one of those underrated independents, but I think we are going into an era where independents are gonna be spotlighted much better at a much faster pace. I see the growth in the independent marketing going through the roof. Um, Grupo Forze, MBNF, GB Tune, obviously FB Journe. And Arnold and Sons watchmaking is not anywhere behind a lot of those other guys. Their new moon watch that they made, that was actually made out of Moonstone or Opal or something, the one we saw at watch time, mm -hmm. insane. Uh, I'm gonna okay. cut this off, I'm gonna thank you guys again. Wait a second, Jesus. Man. Oh wait, the special the Rolex we forgot about. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna bring this closer. This is very important. The most important thing about this watch is the box. I would say. Well, not the most important, but but something that is very of important. utmost important is the box. What we have here is a Rolex Beach Daytona piece serial in green with the OG box paperwork. It even has a new style warranty card. I don't know where this came from, but it matches the serial, which is kind of weird. Does and it have it the older papers as yeah, well? It has older papers, yes. So maybe somebody reissued Ooh. that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's, it's a cool touch. Yeah. So P Serial, Green Daytona, Beach. These things, this is this is one of those things that within time people really back in the day, remember Beach Daytonas, what were they worth? Not 20, a whole 25, lot. exactly. 27,000. So this, this is one of those top performers over the past couple of years. I mean, these things went up to 100 depending on the color. Yeah. Uh, Co color I saw, condition. I saw, I saw guys asking oh, 450 for a full set. So full we set. have the yellow, the pink, the blue, and the, the green. green. Which one's yeah. your favorite? Yeah, the green. The green. I'm just a green guy. Yeah. You know? I mean, I would say green, in, in order, I'd say green, blue, pink, yellow. I mean, I can see you wearing a pink for sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so. Uh, we talked about, we often talked about, you know, things to put away, those blue chip stocks and things of that nature. That's certainly one to put away if you can manage to put together a set. But mostly important, remember, every watch comes with a matching color box, which is why he mentioned. Does it seem like a big deal because it's green? Most Rolex boxes are green, but the yellow comes with a yellow box, the pink with the pink, the green with the green, and the blue with the blue, and that's extremely important. What is that? Feel good. L it? Just feel good. When life throws you a Jeffrey, stroke a fairy wall. Remember box. Get him to the Greek. Anyway, Every box, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you guys. Oh, got speaking that of one. speaking, that was a great movie. You, by the way. you, you mentioned sp stocks and movies. I watched the, on the plane the Madoff thing, Bernie Madoff thing. Yeah. Holy smokes! I hope to see you on the next unboxing. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Yes, we Adrian, will. Adrian, welcome back. Thank you, Roman. Great to be back. How long did that take? 